Hi, this is Andrew Watt, and I'm going to try to make this video one more time. If it doesn't work, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm I'm currently working my way through Mathesis by Julius Firmicus Maternus. This is the Benjamin Dykes translation, which came out earlier. And I'm looking at book two, chapter two, section four, which is on page 109 of this translation. He says, the individual signs are divided into three parts, but the individual parts have decans, so that there are three decans in the individual signs, of which individual decans possess 10 portions of the 30 portions, and they lay bare their dominion and authority over the 10 portions. So he's saying signs are divided into 30 portions, and each decan has 10 of those portions. Essentially, the word portion here is a substitute for degrees. They do, however, have unlimited power and unlimited free license and mark out the fates of men through the authority of their power. Ta-da! What he's saying here is essentially that you should track decans. They have unlimited power and unlimited free license and mark out the fates of men through the authority of their power. He said in an earlier chapter that the signs have that kind of power, right? But now he's saying that the decans have that power too. And he goes on to say in sentence three, the decans themselves are assigned to the individual stars. And if the star was in that decan, even though it may be in another's domicile, it is taken to be as though it is established in its own domicile. For being established in its own decan, it will accomplish these things these same things which it decrees while established in its own sign. And then he goes out to lay out the Chaldean order, that Aries 1 is ruled by Mars, that Aries 2 is ruled by the Sun, Aries 3 by Venus, and so on until he gets to Pisces, where the three decans are ruled by Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. And Mars is the only planet that rules two decans right next to one another. Um, Pisces 3 and Aries 1. There was a system in the Middle Ages for saying, for sort of assembling a set of dignities for each individual planet. If a planet was in a decan that it ruled, that was one point. If it was in a term that it ruled, that was two points. If it was a triplicity ruler, that was three points. If it was exalted, that was four points. If it was in the sign that it ruled by day and it was in the day sign, that was five points. If it was in the sign, sorry, if it was in the sign that it ruled by day and it was night, it was five points. And if it was in the sign that it ruled by night and it was day, it was five points. And it was eight points if it was in the sign that matched the current sect of the day. So if it, if Mars was in Aries and it was in the day, that was eight points. And I think it was seven if it was in the sign of its exaltation. What Firmicus is saying is that, that is bull. Don't do that. He's saying that a planet in its own decan has just as much power as if it were in its own domicile. And it can do what it wants, even if the overall sign is ruled by another planet. Now, he doesn't, at this point, give us any interpretive rules about how that's supposed to work. But this is why I have found Austin Coppock's set of names for the Deccans to be so useful. One it's a thing to hang story off of. So I have gradually accumulated a whole series of stories from mythology and from personal experience that are related to those individual decans, and that becomes the basis of my interpretation. But two, you have to pay attention to how time works. That 
A planet may be in its own sign for a long stretch of time, several months, and it has a huge amount of power in that region. But then it moves into somebody else's sign, and sometimes it's in its own term, and it has strength as if it were in its own domicile there, even though it's in its own, another sign, but it's probably only going to be there for weeks. And then sometimes it's going to be in a sign of its own decan, and it's going to have just as much power as if it were in the sign that it rules, but it's only going to be there for days. And that's kind of what Firmicus is getting at is that a planet can be in its own sign for months and then it's super powerful. When Jupiter is in Sagittarius or when Jupiter is in Pisces, every Thursday is just a glory. But Firmicus is saying a planet in its own decan or its own term has just as much dignity as if it were in its own domicile. And that's worth acknowledging because that awareness, even though this is a minority opinion that I haven't really encountered anywhere else in any other ancient literature, Firmicus is writing to a friend of his and he's trying to teach him what he thinks is important. And this comes in book two. It comes right in the book after his defense of how astrology works. And what he's saying is that every planet has estates and territories and provinces that it rules. And that it's deriving income or strength from in the same way that a member of the Roman patrician class like for Firmicus's patron, you know, sometimes you're the ruler of a whole province and that province's name is Ares. Sometimes you're only ruling a district within a province. Sometimes you're only ruling a town within a province or a village, but it's still yours. And I think that we can all benefit from thinking about the sky the way that Firmicus does and recognize that a planet in its own term or its own decan or possibly even its own dodecatomoria or possibly even its own single degree has just as much power as if it were in its own domicile. Maybe the medievals have done us a disservice. Maybe by creating this point system, they've broken part of the tradition that is worth looking at and, and thinking about how to repair. Because what Firmicus is saying is that that energy may only last for a day or a few hours, but the planet is just as powerful there as it is in a single sign for a lengthy period of time. And I have found that to be quite useful. Thank you for watching. And I want to thank our patrons uh, who have been contributing money for, in some cases, months or even a year for my writing skills and for the work that I have done on my horoscope column and have been encouraging me to make videos for several months now. And here I am getting around to it finally. I hope that this was helpful, and I hope that you find that useful. And in the meantime, keep studying the stars.